stands at the forefront of technological advancements. Witness the remarkable transformation of raw materials into the essential building blocks of our modern world. Explore how U.S. steel fuels construction projects, energizes infrastructure, and shapes the very fabric of our society. Join us on a journey through the heart of steelmaking from its rich history to its promising future. Let's go Inside the Blueprint. Steel, an essential manufacturing material of the modern world an essential part of America's economy, and more. It's a part of our lives, shaping the world we live in. Steel provides the strength and durability needed to build products that are both safe and reliable. Join us on a journey to discover the essence of steel and how U.S. Steel, a pioneer from its very inception, continues to drive progress, embodying the resilience and ingenuity that steel represents. Have you ever wondered what it takes to transform raw materials into the marvels of engineering that power our daily lives? What role does U.S. Steel play in pioneering advancements that continue to shape our future? I'm currently the Senior Vice President of Advanced Technology Steelmaking and the Chief Operating Officer of Big River Steel for United States Steel Corporation. U.S. Steel is the most iconic steel company in the United States. Uh, U.S. Steel has been a cornerstone of manufacturing. Frequent landmarks that you see, the Chesapeake Bay Bridge, New Orleans Superdome, the Hancock Building in Chicago, the New River Gorge Bridge, they're all built with United States Steel. And U.S. Steel is also the first company in the United States to have a safety program, to have a shareholders meeting, to have a stockholders meeting, to have a workforce as large as it had at that time, and was also the first $1 billion company in, in American history. To be around as long as U.S. Steel has for over 120 years, you have to constantly innovate. You have to constantly uh, keep up with technology, invent new technologies, invent new products, develop new products. And we make investments as recently as Big River Steel, which we acquired in 2021. We look at what we can do for our customers from a steel perspective. Can we develop higher strength steels? Can we make products that customers can use that are more efficient, more streamlined? And we develop products along that course of history for the automobile industry, for the construction industry, the solar industry, you name it. We're a world leader in iron making blast furnace technology. So U.S. Steel has everything from mines up in Minnesota where we mine iron ore. We use it in our blast furnaces across the company, across North America and across Europe. And we use it for different applications within iron making and steel making technology. We discovered Big River Steel and the, the opportunity to acquire Big River Steel back in January of 2021. So now what we have across our company is what we refer to as best of both. The best integrated plants in the world, steel making technology, in the best mini mill technology in the world. We have Big River Steel, which is currently 3 million tons, and we're putting another plant next door to the current Big River Steel facility, Big River 2, which will be another 3 million tons with high technology and advanced technology within our industry. U.S. Steel has a very, very strong culture within our workforce. I grew up in Pittsburgh myself, so U.S. Steel becomes personal to me. Uh, I've had family members, uh, relatives, all that have worked somewhere at some plant around U.S. Steel over the years. And if you look across our history, uh, we've employed over 1 million people at this point in time across over 120 years. And if you look right now with over 20,000 employees, the U.S. Steel culture is very, very personal to everyone. Everyone has a lot of pride, pride in the sense of what they do, a pride in what they make, what goes out to the public, what serves our markets, what serves our customers. People really add a lot of value within our company and are very proud to serve different markets and different customers. behind me is our research and development center. So there's a lot of noise going on, but there are a lot of people walking around. And these people work every day to not only innovate new grades of steel that can be used in the auto sector, that can be used in appliance, that can be used for enabling a more renewable energy sector like solar, 
for instance, we have people here who test the strength and the formability of the steel. We have people here who test how it performs when heat is applied and when cold is applied. Steel today is very advanced and very modern. In fact, in this facility, people are making it more sustainable. And so when we go out in the community and we talk about steel, we talk about the fact that we do have goals that are dedicated to reducing our emissions. We do have goals that are dedicated to innovating. And so it's really important when you talk to people for them to understand that steel is not only part of the challenge right now, but it can be part of the solution and enabling a greener economy. And so a lot of the work that we do is focused on how can we improve as a company towards reducing our emissions. But on a broader scale, it's really about how we engage with our community and really improve the places that our people live and work. I think it's really important that we have an advantage here at US Steel because our sustainability strategy is interlinked with our corporate strategy. So as our company changes and evolves, as we transform as a company, sustainability is front and center as part of that discussion. So a lot of initiatives we're focusing on are around our goals to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. So we have two goals. The first one is what we call an interim goal. So we want to reduce our emissions by 20% by 2030, and that's based on a 2018 baseline. And that is an emissions intensity goal. And what that means basically is the amount of CO2 that we produce is divided by the amount of steel we produce, so tons and tons. Then we have a really huge ambitious goal, and it's our net zero goal. So we are aiming to be scope one and scope two, net zero by 2050. So we're really committed to our 2050 goal. And as part of that, we developed the climate strategy report. So that really details our vision for how we plan to meet our 2050 goal. And it's broken out into three areas, really. One is what we can do in our own operations. So from a process optimization standpoint, we're continually looking at ways at how do we reduce our emissions, how do we reduce our energy consumption. And then also we're looking at integrating electric arc furnace technology through our mini mills. And that is a company called Big Rigger Steel that we acquired a couple of years ago. And they have right now two electric arc furnaces. And then we're also looking at how do we incorporate technology like direct reduced iron based first on natural gas and then secondly hydrogen. This is a comparison. So our mini mills utilize electric arc furnace technology where an integrated mill typically utilizes a blast furnace and basic oxygen furnace technology. From a production perspective, a mini mill has about 70 to 80 percent lower greenhouse gas emissions than an integrated mill. In an electric arc furnace, they're actually lower because you utilize a lot of scrap, so recycled steel, as your input. And then there's scope two, which is your energy purchase and uh, emissions associated with that, is much higher in an electric arc furnace mini mill than it is in a integrated mill. Really, what we're doing is trying to balance that out through our portfolio and looking at ways to decarbonize and lower our emissions uh, for both process routes. I am a senior research engineer at US Steel Research and Technology Center. Steel making starts with iron making. Iron making starts with mixing coal, limestone, and iron ore. At US Steel, we have Minnesota iron making facility that we mine iron ore and process it into the furnaces that we have. is a little bit different. It uses mainly scrap. As I said, it is recycled uh, steel. After steel is made with very accurate processes that we have, uh, we move towards secondary steel making, which is further adjusting the 
chemistry of steel. Because chemistry of steel is very important. It dictates the final properties of the final product. So it is really important to make the chemistry as accurate as possible. Different applications would require different chemistries of steel, so we have to make sure that we are adjusting the process in order to make that specific chemistry. After molten steel is made, it is casted. So we cast molten steel and make it solidified, crack-free, solid, and then it moves into rolling processes. Hot rolling is the first part. It has two different steps, um, roughing mill and finishing mill, which help us reduce the thickness of the steel to some extent. And then at the end of this process, uh, the, the product is called hot band. Hot bands can be uh, sold to the customer directly or they can go through further processes. If they stay at U.S. Steel and they need to go to other processes, the first step after this would be pickling, where hot bands are immersed into bath of acid, so oxides and contamination and everything that had formed on the surface of the steel is removed completely. And then after that, the next step would be cold rolling, which may help us get to the final thickness of the steel sheet that we would like to be sent to the customer. At the end of this process, the coils of uh, steel sheet that we have can be submitted to the customers or they can go through uh, further processes, which we call them finishing processes. After the uh, steel sheet is made, it goes through finishing process such as annealing or heat treating and coating. That's the part that I'm mainly focused on. Different thermal cycles, different temperatures, different times that the steel sheet goes through before getting immersed into the bath of molten zinc where the coating happens that dictates different mechanical properties and adjusting everything in that step needs a lot of effort and a lot of lab testing um, before going to mill production. That is the part that I'm mainly focused on. production process because it is very integrated. Uh, every change that is made to any of the steps would affect the other steps. So we have to make sure that we collaborate with each other on a day-to-day -day basis to make sure each of the projects, the development projects that are done, are considering all the aspects of steel production. So here at US Steel, we have advanced simulators, which can help us simulate all different steps of steel production process, from melting, casting, hot rolling, cold rolling, all the way to finishing processes. And behind me, you can see one of the most advanced simulators that enable us to simulate our existing integrated and mini mill facilities. Every panel that we do simulations on in the lab can save us up to two coins, which save us tens of thousands of dollars. And we can achieve a lot of information from that panel within a much shorter time. The second thing that is very important is that these simulators help us to do innovation, to unlock innovation and try different processes. If it is an innovation project, it is gonna have a place in real market and sometime you will see it in you know, when you're walking in the street, when a car passes you, you know that this is what you worked on. This is a great feeling. Whenever we're doing any development project or innovation, the goal that we have is considering our customers and their concerns. Right now, there are a lot of pressure on the customers in order to reduce the carbon emission. And we always have that in our mind. And we try to address that in our day-to-day -day projects that we 
we do in order to make sure that this is addressed and uh, we can help our customers to move forward in, in the market, transitioning to electrical vehicles and so on. I'm the Vice President of Sales and Marketing with U.S. Steel. I have been with the company for 36 years. Steel has been a really significant part of the automotive industry for ever since autos were built by Henry Ford back in the day. You have to think about the evolution of autos. You know, we no longer stand in front of them and crank them like we used to. We get in, we have the ignition and all that. Now we even just have buttons, right, to turn them on. And Steel's been evolving with the automobile over time, and it's vital. I mean, you don't make an automobile without steel in it, and uh, I think almost every auto you see here has some component in it from U.S. Steel. As you think about an automobile and its journey over the last 50 years, you've seen the auto companies focus on two things, really. It's the fuel economy and efficiency of the vehicle, and at the same time, increasing the safety along with that. We're gonna to continue to uh, look to lightweight vehicles, not sacrifice safety, in fact, make them even safer than they used to be, and, uh, and then play a, a really significant role in the development of the electric vehicles and the hybrid vehicles that are all being built today as well. Steel is infinitely recyclable, so you can take material that's in uh, a scrapped car and reuse it to make the new car two, three, ten years from now. And that's actually helping the car companies figure out their entire carbon footprint and their impact on the environment because now they can plan for all of their carbon footprint ten years from now, twenty years from now. And it goes beyond just automobiles, it's really into everything, construction, appliances, packaging, consumer products, you name it. Construction industry is an extremely important market for not just the U.S. It actually consumes the most steel of any market in the U.S. Uh, it's a big part of what we do at U.S. Steel. So the construction industry has evolved to the point of not just using steel beams, but it's gone into th things like exterior panels that you'd see. Metal roofing, metal siding, insulated panels, things like that that are serving multiple purposes. There's the aesthetic part of it, but also there's tremendous resistance to weather events, high winds, hail, things like that, and also insulation. Uh, a metal roof is, is going to do a great job of reflecting the heat off uh, from the, the middle of the summer sun and help keep your energy bills lower. And then there's a safety element of it too. You know, think about all the wildfires that we've had here in this country in recent years and embers that fly around, land on, you know, a cedar shake roof or something like that, and that house catches fire, it's not gonna happen to a metal roof or one with metal siding on it. Steel roofing is actually one of the fastest growing steel consuming segments in the whole US of any industry, maybe next to solar. And steel roofing provides a tremendous opportunity for somebody to put on a roof that's gonna last. We always like to say, you put a metal roof on your house, it's gonna be the last roof you ever put on that house. We came out with a new warranty on the Galvaloon products that we make that's gonna warrant a roof up to 60 years versus a typical asphalt shingle that's maybe only gonna last 20. And now here's the great thing about the value proposition of putting on a steel roof. You think about doing it today and if you're really socially conscious, we got great ways to integrate solar panels into a metal roof that's gonna last the life of the roof. That's the first part. Uh, the second part is the longevity factor. So you might put two or three asphalt shingle roofs on your home 
for the one steel roof you put on. And when the steel roof reaches the end of life, 60 years out in the future, that roof is getting taken off and it's not getting dumped into a landfill somewhere. It's actually being sent back to US Steel and we're remelting it. We're actually gonna make an appliance out of it or a car out of it or something that goes into a solar panel in its next life. So it, it becomes this circular value chain that provides uh, a great sustainable story moving forward. I think to talk about the energy space, you almost need to take a little bit of a history. Think back, what is energy? Go back thousands of years, energy was fire, right? And so wood, things like that. Energy 100 years ago started to turn into, you know, oil, gas, things like that. But now you need to think about the renewable side of, of things as well. So think about hydro, think about wind, think about really one we're really keenly interested in, and that's solar, and that's probably the fastest growing steel consuming segment there is. Steel's role in renewables, clean energy, it goes back a long way, but in recent years, it's just taken huge steps forward. And I think the solar industry is one that's a shining example of that. You think about solar panel efficiency a decade ago, and it, it was fine, but now, we're onshoring the manufacture of solar panels here to the U.S. U.S. Steel is an integral part of that, making it out of cleaner steels, and we're making steels that are gonna be able to last longer in the elements in a solar field. I mean, it, you can't have a solar field where the steel in it all gets rusty within five years. That's no good, right? So we're creating steels that have long runways of corrosion resistance out there that are strong to withstand the weather. I think we're just building this really, really strong backbone of the new grid for the United States with the, the solar innovations that we've been a part of. To me, steel has been the backbone of this country really as long as U.S. Steel has been around. So 125 years. We built the skyscrapers in our cities, we built the vehicles, we built the appliances, we built all the food packaging, consumer goods that steel is used in, and we're building the energy sources of tomorrow, which is gonna make steel the backbone, I think, forever. industry is very focused on safety and we as a company, um, safety is our ingrained in our principles. We actually coined the term safety first, which a lot of people use and it's very much part of who we are. Steel production, I can definitely say that is not possible without uh, teamwork that we're doing at US Steel. Safety within US Steel is not only coming to work and taking care of yourself, taking care of your workers, and not getting hurt on the job. We also look at safety from uh, a cultural standpoint and a mental standpoint, mental health. So with our 360 safety program within US Steel, we make sure that not only employees are taken care of out in the shop, out in the mill, out in the plant, we make sure if there's any topic that an employee has, uh, any issue that they wanna bring up, any concerns that they have, we address every single thing within our culture and within the diversity of our company. partnership with an organization called Responsible Steel, uh, headquartered in Europe, and it has both producers of steel, like ours, as well as customers of steel. And we work together on, a, on 14 principles that span environmental, social, and government's topics. So it's a very inclusive, global organization working to improve the whole sector in the industry. And so we were actually the first uh, North American steel maker to achieve site certification at our Brigory Steel location. And it's a journey. So you first become a member, then you apply for a site certification and you undergo a very rigorous process to achieve the site certification and you get audited. And then Responsible Steel's next phase is to introduce product certification or sustainable steel certification. 
And I'm happy to announce we're the first steel company globally to actually achieve product certification for steel made out of our Brick River Steel facility. Steel is something that, that I believe every single person that lives in this country or around the world sees and touches every day. You just think about your daily life. You wake up in the morning, you go to your refrigerator, get out the creamer or the milk for your coffee, that refrigerator's made of steel. You're going down to do a load of laundry, you've got a washer and dryer, and as you look around and watch the evolution of things, things like solar panels, the support systems on all those, that's now being made out of steel. Steel is everywhere, and it touches every single one of us every day. Thanks for watching Inside the Blueprint. For more information on any of the products you saw today or to find out how to become part of the show, please visit InsideTheBlueprint.com.